I'll be doing a training about uh, free authorizations. So uh, we're gonna uh, show the process of how to do uh, an appliance free up. So first, uh, we're gonna, that's this one everyday treatment and we're gonna say a thumb sucking appliance or a finger screen. So we're gonna be using this code, the 8220. Okay, there's gonna be several uh, parts of it. So whenever this is treatment planet, you're gonna go to, um, you can use uh, this uh, appliance preauthorization process. It has everything that needs to be done. It has all the codes. Um, it has uh, the additional codes that needs to get added. That way it can get approved. But uh, also um, it has the amounts that you need to add on the entrance part of it, okay? So whenever um, you're gonna be doing uh, the pre-out entry, you can use this other one right here and it has all the emails and passwords about the insurance. What am I gonna use? I'm gonna be using the DeniQuest one, okay? So I have this open here. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to authorizations, uh, authorizations and estimate entry. And then from here, uh, it's gonna take you to uh, this page right here, you're gonna click the provider. This is the doctor that uh, treatment plan this um, this procedure. So you're gonna click on the name. And then from here, uh, you're gonna put your patient's information that it's date of birth and member ID. And that's something that you can, um, that you can get from the patient's uh, file. Okay, so here, you go to rest restorative chart and it has a date of birth and then it has the insurance, uh, it has date of birth and insurance information that it's DeniQuest and then subscriber ID, that's gonna be the member ID that it's gonna go on this um, part of the pre-authorizations. I normally have a little sticky note where I have the patient's information that it's the date of birth and member ID. So I put the date of birth and a member ID. And then I just uh, click here, check eligibility. You don't have to add the uh, first name or last name because whenever you put the member ID, it automatically shows the patient's name. And then right here, you're gonna make sure that um, insurance is active for this patient. Okay, so I have my little um, preauthorization process paper here. So on the POS, you're always gonna click office, okay? And then procedure code, that's when where you're gonna put your uh, your code that it's on Denicon. So it's the D8220, and then it doesn't ask for a tooth number. Uh, it's, you're just gonna add that it, the things that has a little start. So the quantity is just gonna be one, and then the amount. So we're gonna do the finger spring. So you're gonna do $250. And then from there, on the notes, that's where you're gonna add your additional, um, your additional uh, DPC codes, that it's this, because that's what is gonna make the difference between a thumb sucking appliance or a finger spring. So you, this is a very important uh, note that you need to add there for this to be able to get approved. Okay, so you're gonna do DPC uh, 1001G, and then on here, you're gonna upload your um, your files that are gonna be um, that are gonna be your intraoral pictures, your x-rays, your doctor narrative, that's everything that it's gonna go on this part of, um, of the pre-authorization and insurance, okay? After you do that, uh, I'm using DeniQuest, so you're gonna click Submit, uh, Pre-Auth, and then it's gonna show you a uh, pre-authorization number, and that's where you're gonna uh, screenshot and put it on the patient's file, okay? Um, after that, it's gonna take about 
three to four days for that pre-authorization to get approved. I'm gonna use this one that is MCNA just as an example. So you're gonna um, do the same thing, date of birth, member ID, and it's gonna take you to uh, the pre-authorizations of this patient. So on this one, uh, whenever a pre-authorization is approved, it's gonna say approved on the status. On um, the request, it will say pay. If it's denied, it will say denied. Um, and then it's gonna give you a code and it's you're gonna click on that code and it's gonna tell you why this uh, pre-authorization has not been approved. Okay, so we're gonna say this pre-authorization is approved. What is gonna be next, you're gonna call the parent and you're gonna let them know that this pre-authorization has been approved. And then uh, we need to schedule the patients uh, to get uh, impressions done. That way we can send that to the lab, okay? And then that's how it starts our process of sending impressions to the lab. It takes about three weeks to four weeks to get that um, appliance back. And that's whenever we call the parents to let them know that it's in the office that we need to see the patient to place that appliance in the patient's uh, mouth. Okay. And this is how uh, we do a pre-authorization uh, for appliance, finger springs, um, surgical instructions, phrenectomies, uh, adult crowns, PAC crowns, um, everything it's on this sheet. Every All the codes are in here. So this is something that you're gonna use to do your pre-authorizations.